The beautiful Hawaiian island of Puna was shattered on Christmas Eve 1991 when 23-year-old Dana Ireland went for a bike ride and never returned. This young woman, known for her adventurous spirit and zest for life, left her parents' home that afternoon with plans to return within a few hours. But Dana's family grew increasingly concerned when she did not come home that night. They notified the police, who quickly organized an extensive search party to comb the back roads and dense forests of Puna. Two days after her disappearance on Christmas Eve, Dana's abandoned bicycle was located on a dirt road just a few miles from her parents' home. Then, in a wooded area not far from the road, the search party made a horrific discovery. The body of Dana Ireland. This beloved resident of Puna had been viciously sexually assaulted and strangled to death. Dana's murder really upset the small, close community. Killings rarely happened in Puna. People were shocked that a nice, popular young woman like Dana could be killed by a violent murderer. It didn't make sense. The peaceful image of Puna as a nice island paradise was ruined. People felt afraid, sad, and angry as they tried to deal with this sudden violent act. The police quickly tried to find suspects and clues to bring Dana's killer to justice, but they faced big challenges. No one saw Dana being kidnapped and murdered. There were barely any physical clues at the crime scene, and no one knew who would want to hurt someone as well-liked as Dana, so the police had very little to go on. Without solid leads or suspects, the investigation hit dead end after dead end. As weeks turned into months with no arrests, the community began to lose hope that Dana's murder would ever be solved. Her case gradually faded from headlines and public attention, but Dana's family never surrendered their determination to find the killer, even as years slipped by without progress. In 1997, there was a big development in the case. A person who gave information to the police made shocking claims. They said that a man named Albert Ian Schweitzer admitted to them that he killed Dana Ireland. Schweitzer was already in prison for other crimes. Schweitzer had an extensive history of violence against women. When detectives tested DNA samples from semen recovered from Dana's body, the results linked Schweitzer to the sexual assault. Based on this potential DNA match, Schweitzer was arrested and charged with Dana's murder. Finally, after nearly six years of fruitless investigation, police believed they had found the man responsible for the brutal killing that haunted Puna. Prosecutors felt confident that the physical DNA evidence, along with Schweitzer's criminal record, provided a convincing case. But Schweitzer vehemently maintained his innocence. His defense team argued the DNA alone was inadequate to remove all reasonable doubt of guilt. In 2000, Schweitzer faced trial for Dana's murder before a jury. The prosecution presented the DNA match as clear proof of Schweitzer's involvement but his defense attorneys noted flaws in the collection and testing procedures of the DNA evidence, arguing the results were unreliable. They made it seem like Schweitzer was an easy target, blamed for something he didn't do. They said investigators were being too determined to solve the big case because the community wanted answers. Ultimately, the jury rejected the defense's arguments and found Schweitzer guilty. He was sentenced to 130 years in prison, what most expected would be the rest of his natural life behind bars. For Dana's family and the community of Puna, Schweitzer's conviction brought a sense of long-awaited closure. The man believed responsible for the murder that had tormented them for years would pay for his sins with the rest of his freedom. But Schweitzer never stopped maintaining his total innocence. Even as he sat in prison beginning a life sentence, he and his legal team tirelessly pursued appeals and petitions. They repeatedly requested new examinations of the DNA evidence used to convict him, but were denied again and again. Until 2022, when advanced DNA testing technology that was not available at the time of the trial provided Schweitzer an opportunity to finally prove his innocence. When the original DNA sample from Dana's body was retested using the new methods, investigators made a game-changing discovery the DNA definitively excluded Albert Schweitzer as the source. This stunning finding meant Schweitzer could not have committed the rape. After serving 23 years of a sentence for a horrific crime he did not do, Schweitzer walked out of prison as a free man on January 25, 2023. 
When they proved Schweitzer was innocent, it was a huge and surprising moment that shook the justice system and surprised the Pune community once more. Prosecutors were back to square one in solving Dana's murder, but had to acknowledge their grave mistake in convicting an innocent man. The real perpetrator had escaped justice while an innocent person lost decades of freedom. When Dana Ireland's family learned that Schweitzer was innocent, they were very emotionally devastated. It meant their daughter's real killer was still free. This news reopened their painful wounds after years of thinking the case was solved. Schweitzer also faced big challenges getting his life back after being in prison for so long. But he talked about how happy he was to be free and prove he was innocent after the system wrongly put him in jail. Over 30 years later, no one has been convicted for killing Dana Ireland. This case shows big mistakes and problems in how police investigated and prosecuted the murder. It shows even DNA evidence can be wrong sometimes, if not handled right. When procedures aren't followed closely, the results might not be correct, and innocent people can get wrongly convicted. This case shows we really need strict rules and oversight to protect people who are innocent. In Pune, Dana's murder, which hasn't been solved yet, is like a lasting pain that makes their peaceful island home feel less calm and happy. Dana's happy life was ended by someone who hasn't been caught, and it's left a sad mark on this beautiful place. But the people who cared about Dana haven't stopped trying to make things right. They all share a goal to find out what really happened, even if it takes a very long time, and they won't give up. This sad case shows that justice can take a long time. But Dana's family and the community have patiently kept fighting for years. This gives hope that someday Dana will get justice. No matter how much time goes by, the truth can't stay hidden forever. Someone in Pune knows what really happened to Dana. Solving this case could take a while and be hard, but people who cared for Dana shouldn't give up. Dana's spirit is waiting for them to find the truth and get justice. They need to keep going to make things right. Though Dana's murder caused lasting pain, some good has come out of the tragedy. Her death brought people together in Pune. They stand united to find justice for Dana no matter how long it takes. Dana is their inspiration to keep fighting, even when progress seems impossible. This awful case shows that even the best efforts by police and courts can fail. Mistakes are made and the truth gets lost. But Dana's family never gives up hope. Their determination proves the human spirit for justice lives on, despite flaws in the system. For many years, Dana Ireland and her loved ones have not gotten justice. But Dana's cheerful spirit stays with Puna, guiding them on the long journey to solve her case. Even when time has passed and the truth is unclear, justice can still happen. Though the final chapter remains unwritten, the story of Dana Ireland does not end in tragedy. For the people of Pune keep her light burning until justice and peace prevail.